another episode of Fishing and Fun, and hopefully it's long awaited. We're out here on Lake Erie catching oh giant hog walleye, right? Well, it's been quite a good morning. There's a little fella, a little younger class there. It's been uh, quite a morning here. We're about seven miles out, and it's late, getting into late March here, mid-March, I guess, and it's been quite a morning. We've been stacking walleyes up, and I figured I brought the camera today, and I was finally going to get some video. A lot of people have been asking for them and whatnot, so uh, it's been a great, phenomenal season, 2015. We had great ice conditions all over Lake Erie, and it's just uh, the fishing's been phenomenal and today is, is just that I mean it's been just great uh, we had it's about 10 o'clock we had our limits here for a little while and we're just letting them go now but we've got lots of fish in the you know 8 to 10 pound range already this morning which is just great and like you saw there another small one so uh, we're gonna see if we can't get a few fish here on video and it's you're not coming through like crazy, but we've been marking quite a few fish on the Vexlar here, and we're going to see if we can get a couple in. And uh, if you want to come over here just a little bit and look at the Vexlar here, it's kind of something I like to do there. You can see, I use my tip of my pole here. I've got one lure here, it's a, it's a dew jigger, and I'll bring that up and show it here in a minute. And then below that, I've got a Swedish pimple. I normally like to keep my lures a little bit spaced out just so I have some lures at different heights and I'll normally just keep a dead stick you know I'll just let this one sit a little bit up on the bottom that way this one now they can look down and, and see it and, and right now the fish I wouldn't say they're skittish but they're not super aggressive they don't want like a lot of crazy movement in the lure so I've got the Swedish pimple and that's normally the one I'll keep and I'll do most of my jigging with that pole and we're in about 25 foot of water, a little over that or so, and we're just off of the reefs out here in front of the power plant. It's a classic late season area. You can see the big shove piles of ice out there, and that's um, it's where the reefs are, and the ice has been pushed up on the shallower areas. It's, it's getting towards the end of our season here. We had a lot of warm up these last few days, and it's kind of, we're getting the last few days of our ice season here. And I figure now that I've got the camera out, we probably won't catch any, but, you know, we give it a try. There he is. I kind of had some activity there. The airboat was driving around and stuff, and we just stopped pressing record there. And then as soon as the airboat kind of passed by, the fish started coming in again. We had a lot of activity, so hopefully now this activity is done, the fish will bite again. But, yeah, I got a nice fish here. It's probably going to be about 28 inches, but... So, uh, yeah, he just came up there off the bottom and, and smacked it. Let's see how nice he is. He's coming up. Nice big head. Yeah. Not too fat, but got some length to it. Yeah, let's get the hook out and see what she looks like. Definitely was hungry. Completely ate the Swedish pimple. I see I'm using this this gold prism today it's one of my favorite colors you can see it's got the sorry there's plenty of tooth marks on that lure yeah that's a nice 27 inch beautiful fish so great great looking fish that's what the home lake the home lake gives to us sir let them go Sure is nice having this here in my backyard. Spent a lot of days out here this year and can't complain. That was a nice fish. I you know a lot of people tell you, hey, you only put one minnow on there or you know this and that. I always go ahead and throw three minnows on there every single time. I hardly ever don't because chances are when you drop it down or while you're down there jigging, you know, one or two gonna fall off or whatever. So if you just keep three on there, you don't have to worry about it. They're either most of the time I believe these walleyes are either gonna bite or they not. You know, most of them already have a, a pre-planned mission on once they come up on your lure. I kind of feel like it's you know one one way or the other. I've already got another mark here. Like I said, that traffic can kind of really put a damper on your fishing. But uh 
you know, whenever you want to come out here, you know, access areas like Catawba State Park, um, Maggie Marsh, Metzger's Marsh are all good areas to start out, just depending on what time of year it is. There's Oh, now we're starting to bite again. Yeah, that's another nice fish, and you can tell, I mean, I've got quite a stiff rod here, and it's uh, nothing fancy, but yeah, we got one doing quite a bit of fighting there, and fun to play with these fish. It's going to be a little bit nicer than the last one. I've got another fish down there right now, too. Catch that one. Yeah, that's a big head here. This is a 30 incher. There's a nice one. Perfect. Look up. Another beautiful fish. I mean, look at the size of that thing. It's beautiful. That's a nice fish. Yeah, around 10 pounds. 10 pounds or so. Probably a little more. That's a real nice one. Let another one go back home there, get some minnows rigged up. Got another fish waiting for me, I think. Yeah, like I said, I mean, it's been a great year, and, um, you know, a lot of people from out of state have come down and fished this year, and, you know, a lot of new new people to the ice, and, you know, it's great for business and stuff. And just, you know, a few things that kind of you want to look out for, you know, if you're new out here, and, yes, at times you want to fish by people that you see and, and stuff like that, but, you know, you want to give people a good amount of room. It's, it seems like this year a lot of people will just come right in and fish with that a few feet. You know, it hurts yourself, you know, just as much as it hurts everyone else. You don't want to fish by people because, you know, you've got a certain amount of fish in an area and, you know, you get a bunch of people in that area and it just hurts everybody's chances. You know, just ice courtesy is something that seems like it can go by the wayside, but... Especially out here with so many people this year, you know, do your best to kind of be courteous to others and that way we can all keep catching fish. I got another one coming up here and, and you know, like I said, we had those airboats and four-wheelers and stuff driving by. You don't catch fish when that's happening. Now that everything's calmed down, I got a couple bites there a second ago and got one on me now. Got getting starting to get some good marks here. And actually, I might have had two fish come up there. There's another one. There's a little guy. But uh, especially when you get two marks like that, you know, that's a good sign that you're probably going to get a bite because they, uh, there's competition. And they know that you know, if one of them's got to eat it or else, you know, somebody's going to miss out on some food. So, you know, there's another nice. These are good, good eaters right here. It's a 17-inch. It's really pretty right now on these a beautiful gold color. I'll let him go back. Those are just our nice males. You know, they're gonna be the spawning you know, spawners and this is this is the time that they really get going. Another thing it's unfortunate I got a lot of big minnows today, but you know, personally I, I'm not big on the those big minnows. I'd like to just use well, this this size minnow right here, I don't know, probably two and a half inch or so. It's plenty big, but even at times, you know, I'll go smaller than that. It's because you get those big minnows on there, and they can you'll find out if you fish a lot, they'll shake off your hook, or you know, a lot of different things can go wrong. I got another fish down there waiting for me. This is this is the way it's supposed to be. We love it when it's like this. I've got two fish down there again. You know, hopefully they bite. We'll see. And they, like I said, they don't really want to come. A lot of times, you know, I'll bring fish up 10 feet or more off the bottom. But today, it's just they don't want to really come up off the bottom. You know, normally, especially in this deeper water, anything over, say, 22, they'll come up and uh, bite pretty good. But today, they just don't want to come up, which is okay with me. They're still biting fine. But there's another one. I've got another one down there on this other pole. I might be able to... Might be tangled up with this pole. Oh, a nice fish. About a 20 inch. Oops. Yeah, this is how it's supposed to be. This is this is what everyone comes here for, is you know, catching them just like this and you know, 
another thing is a lot of people say, well, hey, don't keep those big females. Well, this right here, and, you know, I've seen a lot of them. I can tell you, this is, it's, a, it's about a 20-inch female, 22 or so. But these are the main fish that you want to throw back. Okay, these are, you know, those are the ones that need to go back for, for spawning. And it says, hey, don't keep that big female. It's got 10 million eggs. Well, you know, big girls aren't, big, aren't quite as fertile and, um, you know, you kind of want to go with letting a fish like that go last a lot more years in the in the fishery and it has more fertile eggs and it's just a all around better idea to let fish like that go if you're really worried about that. But we'll see if we can't get one nice, one more big one here. We'll see if we can get another one to come in. I think I got the bottoms coming up. There it is. This is, got a little something happening down there. It's coming. This looks like a, you can kind of tell, you watch the marks, if you really pay close attention, you can see that some of the marks will be bigger, and, you know, of course, that would be a bigger fish. Now this one, he's, he's kind of, he's kind of hanging with it there a little bit. He's still here. He might be checking out this other lure, too. There it is. Oh, just a little one. But we'll take it. We got another fish on this other lure down here. We'll see if we can't double up. Oh, oh he missed it. He smoked this lure. He came right up there and whaled it. Looks like a small one, this other fish. He just, he just run all over the <laughs> There's a double up. We'll finish her off here with a nice little double. Yep, there's a double double. We've got these nice little males. Oops, he's still here. Oh, he's still hooked. I thought he was on hook. Got these nice little males and this. You know, 17 inch fish, a lot of lakes, that's a pretty good fish there, but out here we're looking at 30 inches and we don't know what to do with it. I tell you what, I got another one down there, I can't resist, I gotta go back and get him. <laughs> I got another one down there right now. Okay, there he is. <laughs> well, I think we're gonna end on this one. We just had some more four wheelers start driving around, but I think I got another decent one here. But we've, uh, oh, there he is. There he is. <laughs> Another, it's a nice 24 inch female or so. Nice fat girl. This is a nice one. And, uh, you know, it's been, a, like I said, phenomenal day. We've got some good fish on camera. And I'd say the three main keys to today, it's just, just you know, being mobile and being efficient and, and, and time management and, and being safe. So, you know, as we end up in March here, we'll go out with a nice bang. Got some nice fish, slimy, slimy girl. But we'll uh, get another fish here in a boat and or in, on the ice. And I'm glad to get another episode of fishing and fun out. And hopefully, we will see you soon. So I'll see you out there.